everyone. Welcome back to the uh, latest lecture session. Very quick recap of what we have been up to. We looked at wastewater treatment. We looked at water treatment. Let me summarize that. Wastewater, what do I have? I have different aspects. You know, I have grit. I have suspended solids, some of which will be organic. I have organic content which is dissolved which I am me measuring by BOD or BOD5 and then I need to look at pathogens, right? So, how did I go about it? Preliminary treatment and head works, right? That is the one preliminary treatment and depending upon the wastewater system, they can or might not have primary treatment, right? That is up to the relevant plant operator. So, if you have primary treatment, what are you going to get? You are going to get some deposits or this particular uh, sludge, yes. And then after primary, you are going to have secondary treatment where we pumped in oxygen. So, here we looked at uh, grit and other materials. Here we looked at suspended solids. Here we lo are looking at the organic content. You are pumping in oxygen and then flock forming bacteria, okay. This I guess I drew in the uh, reverse manner, right. So, we have that and the sludge is going to or the flocks are going to settle down more at the bottom. So, some of it will be recycled, some of it will again have to be wasted as activated sludge. This is activated sludge obviously because you have microbes here. Secondary treatment, uh, I am not going to look at or speak about nitrogen and phosphorus or the tertiary treatment here and then disinfection to look at the pathogens, right. So, this is one aspect. And water treatment again, preliminary treatment, primary where we have some sludge being formed, right, depending upon uh, what do we say relevant aspects. But before that, obviously, we have coagulation and flocculation and such. If I have lime softening and such, again, that will have its own sludge, CaCO3, the relevant solid, or magnesium hydroxide and such, yes even during sedimentation and such after coagulation and flocculation, I will have some kind of uh, settled sludge and then I will have disinfection, let us say. Again, we are not looking at the all the aspects. So, we covered this, we covered this, the water is pure or relatively fit for discharge here, it is fit for drinking here. But what else do we need to look at? What are we missing? So, obviously, as you can see here, during this water treatment, I am producing sludge activated sludge and some primarily inorganic based uh, sludge or if it is uh, okay, primarily inorganics or relatively inert uh, sludge here. So, obviously, if I am going to treat the water, I am also going to have to look at what to do with the sludge that I am producing. So, the next couple of sessions are going to look at residual management, residuals as in we are talking about these uh, residuals. Maybe the term should not have been sludge here, I should have used the term residuals or such, the settled solids, right. Here activated sludge is commonly accepted in this context. So, we have the residuals. So, I need to look at residual management. Before that, let us go back to the sewage treatment plant at IIT Roorkee, the one based on uh, SBR, sequential batch reactor, right. There we looked at sludge. Uh, let us just look at what it is they are trying to do there, right. Let us go there. Okay, if you see this was the one or if you remember, we have something on the screen here, right? And this one as you can see is right from the aeration tank, the sample taken right when the aeration was stopped before settling was allowed to start. And then we uh, looked at it real time, I guess, right? You can see the time 7 minutes uh, 45 seconds or so left and I guess within 1 minute you see that you know, I guess zone uh, settling if I may call that. So, what is going to happen to this particular settled sludge later, right? All this, I mean this is within a minute, settling again 2 hours or so uh, here the cycle. So, then you are going to have relatively thickened uh, sludge, right? So, that some of it we are recycling for the microorganisms to be maintained in our plant. Some of it, what are we doing? We are trying to, uh, what do we say, uh, dewater it. Right, let us look at that. Let me look at that picture, okay. If you remember this, 
let me play it from the UV system. This was the UV. We are done with water treatment. Water is being uh, discharged from here. We are disinfecting the water here with the UV, right? That we are done with. So, what next? We also need to look at the relevant sludge. So, here you see the uh, sludge dewatering machine. I guess sludge is coming via this particular uh, system out here. So, here they are conditioning it. How are they conditioning it? They are adding a coagulant, right? I think a polyelectrolyte here, right? Maybe alum, pro probably alum. And then they are going to have the dewatering, uh, what do we say, equipment here. I think it is a uh, belt press if I am not wrong. So, let us see what we have. Let me try to slightly uh, press through that. Okay. So, again, what do we have? We have sludge, but uh, here you see the solids concentration is relatively higher than the effluent or the supernatant, but you still cannot dispose that. Why is that? Because this is uh, cells, right? Uh, microbes, cells. So you won't have a lot of pathogens. You will still have some pathogens, though. Typically, in this microbial community that thrives, pathogens relatively less, but you can still have some pathogens. And more importantly, as I was mentioning, this is cell, cell, right? Organic matter, mass, cell mass or organic content. So, if you just leave that out there again, that's going to degrade. You are going to have issues with smell, flies, right? And if it has pathogens, that's going to be an issue too. And if it is from a common effluent treatment plant, you can even have heavy metals in that sludge, not in the activated sludge. So, what do I need to do? I need to treat it further. So, that is what we are going to look at. Or I first, before treating it or, you know, maybe transporting it somewhere for processing or such, one aspect that is typically looked at, looked at is dewatering. As the name indicates, you have sludge with some solid content and a lot of water, still a lot of water. It is like a slurry, right? What are we trying to do? We are trying to dewater it. That is what we are doing here. Let us just look at that though, right? I guess it is a filled belt press here. Let me just try to go ahead. So, here what are we adding? We just looked at that particular picture. So, sometimes you will have to condition it or you can condition it rather. So, here they are adding the alum, if I am not wrong, uh, coagulant. They are using the term poly, but I am assuming it is alum. You want to form the relevant uh, bigger colloids. And here you see the slurry or the sludge that is coming in. You can see the consistency here near here, right? You can see the consistency. You should have a considerable solids, but still, you know, a lot of water. So, if you want to transport it, it is the volume is going to be remarkably high, right? So, the volume is going to be remarkably high. This is not what I want to transport or uh, treat or such, right? Not treat, at least transport. So, especially in small plants when I am not treating it to a great degree later, right? Or if I want to decrease the uh, volume, so I am going to have to dewater it. So, that is what you see. I guess it is a filter or belt press here. That is what we are seeing here. I guess you were able to see the water coming out and such. Let us see the final product. So, slowly but surely the solid content is increasing. The volume or the water content is decreasing, percentage water. And here you see the kind of uh, output that is out here, right? So, here the solid content is relatively higher and the water content is or percentage of mass in uh, due to the water is less and also the volume is less, right? So, that is easy for me to transport. Let me look at the other slide. So, there are different ways to look at uh, what we say uh, this residual management. And in that context, we are looking at one example, uh, IIT Roorkee's, uh, what do we say, sludge. What are they doing? Being a small plant, they cannot build a digester or anaerobic digester or such. It is not going to be economical. But obviously, they cannot throw it out there because of obvious issues, you know, decomposition, relevant uh, vectors like flies and such coming in, right? So, what are they doing? We have a pilot scale uh, rotary drum composter. So, this is a uh, glorified uh, composting technique. So, you have a rotary drum, drum that rotates from time to time. Why does it rotate? Here we are looking at aerobic decomposition, right? Aerobic degradation. You are again supplying air, you know the relevant process, right? Oxygen, right? And you are going to provide oxygen rather than turning it manually or in windrow piles or such. Here you are doing this in that rotary drum composter where the kinetics are higher. So, on the left, you are going to feed this particular sludge with some of the solid waste that is coming in with our. Uh, from our IIT Roorkee. So, this is not dealing with only sludge or primarily not designed or built for sludge, but some of the sludge, only some of sludge and mostly 
this solid waste from IIT Roorkee is being put in here and then you are going to have uh, what we say composting occurring. Again, this is rarely used but I wanted to mention what's you know that you can do a, a, a lot of uh, permutations and combinations and come up with your solutions, right? So, again here it is now you see the sludge I guess. So, you, what do we have in composting? Again, you have microbial content which they are trying to uh, get by some of this uh, what do we say sludge and you need to have carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus. Carbon you see the relevant leaves and such good source of carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus typically your kitchen waste. So, after that what can you do? You know this is the solid waste but again let us skip this. This is this case in India everywhere and then you can get this kind of uh, relatively stable compost right. This is what is compost. This is good fertilizer for your relevant plants right. High in nitrogen and phosphorus relatively low biodegradability right. So, it is pretty inert. Let me uh, look at a better picture ok. There you can see that now right. So, this is pretty good uh, fertilizer, but again keep in mind that it depends on who is treating it and to what extent and such right. Why is that important? For example, uh, I came across a case where I think uh, common effluent treatment plant was trying to sell its sludge as uh, what do we say fertilizer for farmers. There it is a common effluent treatment plant meaning typically catering to industrial wastes. Their heavy metals are going to be high. So, if I just compost it heavy metal concentration is not going to decrease and typically all that uh, sludge from the common effluent treatment plants is supposed to go to a hazardous waste landfill and should not be sent to the farmers. So, these kinds of things you need to look at. So, let us look at it compost people are trying to sell this right. Let us see if we have the relevant composition here. So, composition ok there is the composition pH relatively neutral moisture content yes you still have moisture nitrogen let me see if we have a better ok nitrogen 2.0 percentage nitrogen and phosphorus let us say right. So, that is what you have relatively nutrient rich uh, what do we say material that is relatively inert and that is good for your relevant uh, what do we say gardening or at least for uh, farmers to apply or use in their field. So, that is one thing to keep in mind. So, residual management we we'll just looked at one example to get your juices fo flowing. Let us move on and look at the other aspects. So, types of residuals we looked at the holistic view one is sludges right slurry of solids in water, solids in water that is when we call that sludges. If it is when do we call it biosolids for wastewater systems typically the ones from activated sludge and such let us see. And we also looked at RO and such RO again or you know even the other uh, membrane based techniques you are rejecting or you have considerable reject. In that reject you have high concentration of your relevant uh, compounds. So, even that you need to look at it, but we are not going to look at that in great detail. And this obviously is a great disadvantage with RO. What do you do with this brines? Let us say, right. So, concentration uh, increase dissolved solid concentration, example by electrodialysis, that is something you can do. Evaporation or crystallization produce crystal product by evaporating water and then disposal, I guess. So, solids from screenings and grit, right. What are we talking about? For example, from preliminary treatment, right, we have the screw auger and then the grit washing chamber out here. Let us look at what the grit and such looks like. So, here you see uh, an example right and here we see coarse screening or coarse screens and then wash your grit out here let us say right. So, this is what we are looking at right, but here this is relatively more inert. So, different kinds of disposal obviously, this will not go into any composting techniques or such. So, if you see wash your grit and how it looks like, but typically this is pretty inert. So, in general the sources of various residuals what are they? We know that they come from water and wastewater. In wastewater they can, can come from screens from the grit removal grit, primary sedimentation tank underflow right, activated sludge wastage. In the activated sludge process some of the sludge is being wasted, some of it is recycled, some of it is wasted right. So, that particular aspect needs to be looked at that that is its source. In drinking water obviously screenings, sedimentation basin obviously and brine from desalination process right. So, these are the aspects that need to be uh, considered when we are looking at residuals let us say. In India though typically we are going to look at uh, this I guess yes and if it is a common effluent treatment plant and you have primary treatment and sludge from that primary treatment that sludge has to go to a TSDF 
treatment storage and disposal facility which is more or less a hazardous waste landfill that is something to keep in mind. But the law does not say that the after biological process the sludge has to go to a landfill but the issue is after biological process you know uh, depending upon the kind of influent uh, characteristics of the water and the heavy metal concentrations in the influent wastewater at this common effluent treatment plant the sludge can have uh, high concentration of the heavy metals that is something to uh, keep in mind I guess right maybe that is going to change soon. So, let us move on. So, properties of this residual or the sludge that we are looking at what is it that we are looking at typically primary sludge if it is from primary sludge. So, mostly are considerable organic solids, grit, inorganic fines, some of it and it is pretty odorous and it is a slurry. Solid concentration you can understand that it is not very high, but this itself is high enough right. Solid concentration is 4 to 6 percentage and organic content is high right. Volatile suspended solids uh, 60 to 80 percent right. And next aspect secondary sludge right are from the uh, activated sludge. So, it is from what is it mostly made of? It is made of uh, made of or consists of microbial mass or microbes let us see typically dark brown and again it is organic matter cells right and these are microbes they will die without access to waste and oxygen and then this dead microbes again they are organic matter that will be degraded by other kinds of microbes let us see. So, that will rapidly become odorous during anaerobic conditions let us see. Salt concentration as you see is 0.5 to 1.5 percent it is not very much and suspend salts obviously as expected the organic content is considerable biodegradable or organic content let us see let me leave it there. And what else trickling filter sludge which we did not look at similar to that of the secondary sludge salt concentration though relatively higher and suspended solids too in the similar range. And anaerobically digested sludge let us see what we have after digestion of sludge by anaerobic process what do we have again we still are going to have a microbial mass but again this is going to be relatively inert though salt concentration as you see is increasing and suspended salts concentration is or percentage is decreasing what about the one from aerobically digested sludge right again uh, relevant aspect but here the issue is that the relevant uh, mass that comes out or microbes are flocculent in nature. So, that is why dealing with that later and such is going to be difficult that is something to keep in mind. Salt concentration too is 1 to 2 percent and suspend solids too relatively lower. Mechanically dewatered sludge the one that we just looked at we know the consistency it is like wet mud or chunky solid I guess what we looked at the output from the belt press that we looked at is somewhere in between and for wet mud solids typically 15 percent and for chunky solids not ch solids for wet mud 15 percent chunky solids 40 percent. So, ours would have been somewhere in between I guess right. Again there are different ways to look at it we will look at all these aspects. So, residual management systems what is the approach thickening right. Firstly why am I concerned with thickening because if I do not thicken it well enough right if there is poor thickening and if I am recirculating this particular sludge to a particular uh, process later right what is going to happen I am going to have very high volume. So, if I have higher volume then again the size of the relevant tank is going to be higher. So, this is something to keep in mind. So, you want to have good thickening so that the volumetric flow rate with that considerable or relatively less volumetric flow rate you will have more mass being transported that is something to keep in mind. Thickening is something that you typically strive for during your settling tanks and such and then stabilization. This is not required for inert uh, what do we say uh, residuals especially for water treatment or from water treatment. But if it is activated sludge or even sludge from primary treatment of your wastewater treatment plant that is considerable organic content right. So, that is biodegradable and that will lead to or is putrescible let us say right. So, that is something you have to look at. So, you will have to stabilize it before you can dispose it and one aspect is conditioning as in you are going to condition it or you are going to prepare it so that it can be dewatered that is something to keep in mind. So, dewatering we looked at that particular uh, uh, aspect we are removing the water as much as possible so that it is relatively more compact and easy to handle right and obviously then we are going to look at disposal. So, before we go to that 
uh, I guess I'm not going to go through these aspects. Please note that we still are looking at physical, chemical and some biological aspects of sludge. In India, sludge, we don't look at these in great detail, but I'm just presenting this here so that you get an idea of some of the variables that we have to look at, especially specific gravity. It gives you the mass relative to the mass of water. That's something to keep in mind. Again, other aspects too, but we'll come back to this later as and when needed. So, solid computations, right? So, we are concerned obviously with the volume, right? When uh, any design, obviously volume comes into play. So, volume of solids, right? And here we have the density. Density is mass per volume. So, from that you can get the solid volume too when you have the density. But here we have the density of water. But if I have the specific gravity of the relevant solids, I can get the density of the solids. And thus, from that I can get the volume of solids. And here one aspect to note is that sludge, right? What is the sludge made of? It's made up of solids and water, suspended solids which are being settled out and also water. So, sludge is made up of solids and water. So, mass of sludge, there are two contributors. Similarly, from uh, what do we say, for volume 2, assuming no interactions between solid and water, decent enough assumption, volume of sludge is equal to the volume of solids and volume of the water. And looking at the or considering the relevant info that we had earlier or in the earlier, uh, what do we say, uh, PPT or the slide, we are going to plug that in here, right? So, we have the mass, we have the specific gravity of the different uh, aspects that being considered such as sludge, solids and water and then the density, let us say, right? So, one aspect we typically look at is that you know, we have this term called PS. It's usually reposit or solid concentrations are usually reported as a fraction of the solids, let's say, right? So, MS by total mass, it's typically fraction of wa water mass, I guess, again, with respect to mass, mass of water by total mass. So, using this set of variables, right? This is with respect to the volume of the sludge, right? And then 1 by MS plus MW total mass. You can play around with it and noting that this is the equation you can come uh, to here and then again playing around with these variables you will end up here right you are getting the specific gravity of the relevant sludge right and that's depend upon that of water specific gravity of the relevant not water pardon me of the solids and then the mass fraction of the solids and mass fraction of the water this is something that you can usually measure let's see these are things that you can usually measure Similarly, volume of the relevant sludge can also be looked at or measured. Let us move on. So, the solids, what do they consist of? We know that they consist of fixed meaning inert and inorganic and volatile which means or stands for organic. Please note that volatile typically means the compound does not want to stay in water, it wants to stay in the gaseous phase. But here, we are using that based on the kind of measuring technique and that is used for referring to the organic fraction. Again, for solids, we again have fractions. One is for fixed or inert and then for the volatile. So, that is something to keep in mind. Again, you play around with the above equation and variables, you will get to this particular aspect. So, let us see, uh, we have, I guess, one example. Let us look at that. So, we have it from a primary settling tank, right? Determine the volume of sludge produced daily. The flow rate is given. Suspended solids coming into the system is being given. Removal efficiency of the suspended solids is 59 percent as expected within the expected range. The sludge solid concentration is 5 percent again expected range. Specific gravity of solids is measured, right? So, let us uh, move on and see how to go about it, right? So, first aspect is changing the units as per requirement. Again, just with respect to meter cube per second going to meter cube per day. And then influence suspended solid concentration, you want the mass per time. Here you have volume per day and uh, milligrams per liter. This I want to convert into milligrams per meter cube. So, that is what are grams per meter cube. So, that is what is being done here. If there are any numerical errors, you can correct that here, but we are just looking at the approach. Then the flux, let us say, or I should not maybe cause that flux here. Let me not call that flux. Suspended solid mass uh, flow per day, right? or mass being generated per day. How much is that? It is kgs per day, 3628 kgs per day of suspended solids, let us say, right, are coming in per day. And removal efficiency we know is 59 percent. 
So, mass of solids that are being settled out or removed in the primary settling tank or sedimentation tank, it is going to be 59 percent. So, 59 percent of this 3600 seems to be 2410 kgs per day, that is the sludge, right. And in general, not the sludge, this is the solids. I should not have said sludge, this is the solids. But what is the solid concentration in the sludge? It is only 5 percent, right. That is something to keep in mind. This 5 percent is from this particular solids. So, sludge will have 95 percent water content and 5 percent solid content. These are the variables that are given in a way when they mention 5 percent solid content. So, mass of sludge equal to mass of solid plus mass of water, this is something that we are aware of, right. So, if I have this particular fraction, you know, this fraction is coming from these solids, right. So, sludge produced when I have this much solids, let us say, right. I will have to look at that ratio, right, 105, right. So, that is what we are doing. So, this is the sludge that is being produced. So, for solids of 2411 kgs per day, right that is only 5 percent of the sludge, then this total sludge is 42,820 kgs of sludge per day is being produced. So, you understand the issues with respect to handling this, what do we say mass and then the volume of the relevant sludge, right. So, that is going to be considerable. So, you understand the need for dewatering and such. So, this is one of the equation that we looked at earlier, right and we have most of the relevant variables in this particular equation. Yes, taking the specific gravity of water to be 1, fine. I guess we have the relevant equation, specific gravity of the solids is given 2.65 and P s and P w are also given 5 percent solid that means 95 percent water, yes. So, you plug it in and looks like the specific gravity of sludge is 1.032. So, slightly higher than that of uh, water, denser than that of water. So, density of sludge, specific gravity times density of water which is the reference. So, we are going to get the density of the relevant sludge. So, volume of sludge produced per day, right? Mass of sludge produced per day by density of sludge produced per day. Density is equal to mass by volume. So, if I want volume, it is mass by density. So, I guess I have the mass of sludge that was produced from the earlier case and the density was calculated. So, okay, I have the mass of sludge, I have the density. So, the volume is calculated. So, you see that considerable volume 41.5 meter cube per day of volume is being generated. So, with that I will end today's session and in the next session we are going to look at what are the issues with uh, sludge if I directly throw that or dispose that onto land and from there we look at how to you know or we looked at different aspects conditioning, dewatering, stabilization and so on and so forth. We will look at those aspects and we will end this course with that. Thank you.